Why are black Americans falling behind in home ownership? They say there's good news as the whole country increased its home prices by nearly 21% after the pandemic. Unfortunately, it's not the same for everyone. According to studies, it's mostly white Americans who are enjoying the privilege of owning a house, while black Americans are continuing to get left out from this growth. But why are black Americans falling behind on home ownership? Let's look at it. My name is Manif Ali, and I became a self-made multimillionaire in my early 20s. I've built multiple brick and mortar businesses with billions of dollars of sales. I started making videos like this to share my life experiences so that I could teach others to become successful. And if you like this type of content that I'm giving you, go ahead and smash the subscribe button, like this video, and share it with people who might find this helpful. Recently, we've seen the housing market surge to make millennials and baby boomers alike join the hype to make money in real estate. But as the market grows, it should also be emphasized how black families are still lagging behind in terms of progress, both in the financial realm and home ownership. Data shows that 15% of black families live in the largest metropolitan cities, but only 10% own homes, while 64% of white Americans across the country own 76% of the occupied homes. In the first quarter of 2022, reports from the National Association of Realtors showed that black families have the lowest home ownership rates, 44.7% while Hispanic families lie in the middle at close to 50% and white families have a high 74% home ownership. If you compare the median wealth of black families to white families, the difference is almost 10 times. And the reason for it is simply because of home ownership. In fact, the gap between white and black families is worse than it was in 1968 during the legal segregation years. Imagine that. The Home Lenders Association used the term redlining all the way back in the 1930s. And redlining means you list certain communities as detrimental influences or below the working class, which typically was mostly occupied by black neighborhoods. Because of these prejudices, the Home Lenders Association deemed people of color too risky to lend loans to. Again, removing the privilege of owning a house to accumulate wealth. And believe it or not, we still have real estate agents who are trying to keep their neighborhoods exclusively white. There have been videos of undercover white and black homeowners who have tested several real estate agents. The undercover home buyers tried checking houses without a pre-qualification letter, and most of the black homeowners were not allowed to look at homes while white homeowners went to the same agent and they were given access. Or sometimes the agent would steer them to other communities to keep them away from primarily white neighborhoods. Now I have to tell you, as the owner of one of the largest black owned and minority owned real estate firms in the country, we've done billions of dollars of transactions. The data is there to show this huge gap. And I'm gonna just get personal for a minute. You know, growing up in a community of color in the projects, home ownership was an important thing for a family to accomplish for generational wealth. Now you might go on not noticing these little differences and not noticing the things that have gone before. And you might even say, all you gotta do is grind it out and get a house. My mom had to work extremely hard in order to move us from the projects over to buying a house a couple of blocks away. There is a great amount of work to be done to start to level off the playing field so that everyone can enjoy home ownership. The reason why I talk about this so that we can all be more informed about the way things were before, but just because things were like that before or even now doesn't mean the future has to be that way. They're all across the country, there is a demographic shift taking place as well. And obviously being in real estate, we have to support home ownership for everyone involved but a lot of people who are traditionally living in those same neighborhoods are being displaced by a demographic shift of home ownership. Going back on topic, there is a lot of discrepancies in lending a loan, and studies show that if a person of color applies to a mortgage, there are a lot of times where they get loans that are not fair to them. So even if you're earning $100,000 a year, you're more likely to get a subprime lending rate compared to someone who's getting $35,000 a year. Time and time again, studies have shown minorities with little wealth are continuously being left behind. Sure, there is a surge of wealth creating marketplaces out there, but it also expands the gap between whites and people of color, which create even more inequality. Now, I'm a firm believer in we live in the greatest country in the world, and I do understand that there are people who can do better for themselves. I get that because coming from a poor, underprivileged, poverty-driven area that I came from, I can understand how not everybody's trying to grind it out. But I also see 
access as an issue because home ownership is essential for building wealth because it provides financial advantages such as appreciation, tax savings, increased deductions, and giving you that ability to borrow against the equity of your home and just building a legacy of wealth. As reports show that homeowners have 40 times the net worth of a renter. So it's no secret that the biggest driver of wealth appreciation in the United States is home ownership. If you bought a house back in December of 2020, depending on the market, your Los Angeles, your San Francisco, New York, you could be worth literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars more. Your rent is not building your net worth at all. It should also be documented that the lack of opportunities for home ownership among black Americans, studies have shown that black people get denied on a mortgage 84% higher than white applications. And that's a 10% increase since 2019. So let's look at the payday loan on average it's almost 390% more than your average interest rate at a bank. There's no way it could be worth it to anyone. Yet some black families have no choice but to rely on these type of loans so they can enjoy a roof over their heads. Because of the lack of opportunities, black households are more likely to borrow from check cashing counters and payday lenders than traditional banks. These are predatory lending practices that are designed to keep people in debt. And one of the biggest reasons why mortgages are denied among black people is because of what's called reflected credit history. The lower credit scores for people of color caused by historical prejudice has added to the ongoing problem of finding wealth opportunities. In the FICO credit score, more than 50% of white households had a minimum score of 700 compared to only 20% of black families that had 700 credit score, which as a result caused 20% of black households getting denied when they apply for a mortgage. That's almost double the denial rate compared to white households. On a lighter note, I'm releasing my latest book, Personal Finance, The First Steps to Becoming a Millionaire. It's a great book that my team and I spent a whole lot of time creating, and it's going to be the best book to help you reach your dreams on becoming a millionaire. Go ahead and hit that link down below. Sign up so that I can give you the most valuable content about becoming wealthy. In full disclosure, 100% of all of the proceeds from this book will go to charity so that I can promote more things like home ownership. If you like this type of content, go ahead and apply a little bit of liberal pressure to that like and subscribe button. Let me and the algorithm know that this type of video is valuable to you so that I can continue to make you more content like this each and every week. Make sure you turn on that notification bell so that when I release a video, you're informed. Experts have recommended that there is a great need in providing fair, equitable investments in all communities. Better freeways, better transportation, better infrastructure necessities should be prioritized for all and improving the playing field for everyone. There is a need to invest in minority communities and to improve the quality of life, but also to improve the overall economy of this country. There should be a reworking of the credit industry to make it more inclusive to applicants with diverse financial backgrounds. How long are we going to keep the barriers that divide us? As of now, the credit system scoring does not include regular payments like utilities and rent. It currently prioritizes updating the score for loan and credit card payments. But how are we going to score black and Hispanic families when we can barely get them credit cards and mortgages. Banks and legislatures should extend credit and down payment assistance to provide for Americans of color with better mortgage and loan opportunities. This will also prevent people from engaging in shady money lending activities. There's also a great need to stop redlining communities and steering people. If a black household is going to live in a neighborhood that's outside of theirs, neighborhoods should not restrict anyone based on all of the reasons why we know sometimes they are restricted. And the same goes for malpracticing real estate agents. There should be accountability for those agents who are trying to steer black families away from white communities and vice versa. Home ownership is the number one way to build wealth in the United States. You have up to three families sometimes living together just to be able to afford a house. And nothing more would be much more satisfying piece of land or property that allows a person to be able to walk around freely. That's power. It's not just about wealth. A home ownership is something special. And a lot of Americans suffer because they can't realize these dreams. In owning a black brokerage that's 99% black, and we focus on areas in Los Angeles that are from Lamert Park to Ladera Heights. We've closed billions of dollars of sales in that area, and we see it every day. What I'm talking about is highly noticed. People are being pushed out and not being able to afford in the communities they lived in, worked in, worshiped in, and has been traditionally where their parents 
and grandparents and families have lived in. I wanted to talk about this subject so that we can all help our part to level the playing field. And this is about financial literacy, and that's why financial literacy is so important to me. Growing up in the projects, there was no financial literacy. There was no role models to tell you how to gain wealth, how to secure financing, how to get a mortgage. The people that owned homes in those neighborhoods worked the honest hard way to get them. And so if you're a person listening to this and you think you can't afford a home, the first step in getting this right, let's start to fix our own individual credit and start to save money. You might know that a goal is going to be harder for you because of all the other underlying factors, but that doesn't mean that it's not achievable for you. When I first started out in real estate, I really didn't have two coins to rub on. I saved all the money that I could from the military and then I started to buy real estate. I started to buy and amass wealth one at a time. Did I know and think that the chips were stacked up against me? Absolutely, but you just gotta keep going sometime. You can't wait for the mayor or the council people or the governor or the president or anybody else to come and get you the aid you need sometimes. Sometimes you gotta figure it out yourself and go over the hurdles that are in front of you. I hope that you enjoyed this topic. I know that it will be a long battle ahead, but if we can keep more people informed, we'll slowly see progress and have a level playing field in the housing market. Please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and let me and the algorithm know that this video was worthy. And if you want to learn more about the housing market, go ahead and check out this video, the housing market trend of 2022. Will it boom or will it crash? I'll cover some points and then let you decide. It doesn't really matter if it booms or crashes. So watch the video.